Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm Dr. Paranjit and you're watching Doctor Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, we always talk about health related topics and we educate you about them in simplified languages. So today's topic is snoring. And yes, every single one of you are or will be annoyed by snoring of someone or somebody in and around you. So why does snoring happen? What is the basic reason for snoring? What causes snoring? What can be the complications? Actually, is it a disease? Is it a symptom? Does it cause issue in your health? Can it be dangerous? Can you actually treat it? All these things will be discussed today. And today we are going to see every single thing that is possible about snoring and will explain you every single detail in simplified language just for you on doctor education so stay tuned i'm dr paranjit and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already and press the bell icon watch our videos there are many other videos for you to see browse on my channel and make sure you've seen every single video which is there available If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. So guys, snoring is basically blocked airways. Wherever while sleeping, your respiratory tract becomes blocked there is snoring and the sound of snoring happens because the upper airway walls the tip of those tissues actually they touch each other and vibrate and that's why the typical sound of snoring happens so this vibration sometimes can lead to decreased amount of oxygen entry decreased amount of air entry in the lungs and can sometimes even block or stop your breathing. Yes, snoring can be big, can become dangerous. Typically, so typically snoring happens if you are overweight or sometimes in old age. So let's understand what all can be the reasons of snoring. So like I said, there has to be a blockage in the airway. So why and how will your airway get blocked? So the first and most important reason to understand is if there is a decrease in muscle tone in the parts of the neck, in the parts of the tongue, then what happens when you sleep? Then the tongue will fall back and can lead to blockage of the airway and lead to snoring. This is most commonly seen with people who are overweight or who are old or people who take antihistaminic or sedative sleeping pills at night, their tone of these muscles are decreased for that time and then you see that people taking antihistaminics for cold medications uh, like cold medications at night, they snore on those days. So that's the reason why because the tone of these muscles they get relaxed and the tongue fall back. So that's why snoring happens and sometimes even alcohol, sometimes even alcohol leads to this decreased muscle tone and you can get snoring. So just like this decreased muscle tone, what can happen that instead of tongue falling back, the tongue can be very big or a thick tongue very big or tongue which is thicker from the backside can lead to snoring. That's why in obese people as their weight increases the tissues in all around the neck also increases and that's why the airway becomes narrow and snoring can happen. Then whenever there is a blockage in the mouth or in the nasal package passage in the, whenever there is a blockage in the mouth or in the nasal passage you can have snoring. So how can there be a blockage in the mouth? In children, the most common reason of blockage in the mouth or in the airway are tonsils and adenoids. If there is any 
inflammation infection or increase in size of the tonsils or adenoids it leads to blockage in the upper airways and snoring especially in children same way if there is any swelling inside the mouth say upper part of the mouth or say the uvula the uvula inside the mouth the small thing hanging which you can see inside when you open your mouth that is called uvula if there is a swelling in these parts also snoring can happen then if we talk about the nose if there is a there is a deviated nasal septum the septum in between the two nostrils of the nose is deviated to one side to either side that can lead to snoring then if there is a nasal polyp if there is a growth inside the nose that can lead to snoring if there is any congestion nasal congestion due to cold or due to allergies that can lead to snoring so all these things can lead to snoring and snoring can be a symptom of obstructive sleep apnea also now osa doctor sleep apnea is a very serious condition it should not be ignored now let's talk a few about sleep apnea sleep apnea what will happen in sleep apnea you will snore a lot and along with snoring there will be partial or complete stoppage blockage of your breathing for more than or equal to 10 seconds so if your breathing stops for 10 seconds during sleep what will happen then your brain will signal you and you will gasp you will gasp or snort out of it without even knowing it and at that time what will happen that time you will wake up a little without even realizing and then get back to sleep and get back to snoring this cycle of 10 second partial or complete stoppage of breathing followed by a gasp of breath and partial wake up without knowing and then again sleeping and snoring keeps on repeating in the night in sleep apnea and that's why patients with sleep apnea have night time awakening and day time sleepiness issues so they become tired in the day they are always sleepy whenever they have and a little amount of time even while driving or doing some handling some heavy machines they can fall asleep and cause dangerous accidents so that's why sleep apnea is dangerous so if you feel that you are very tired in the day and you and you snore then you should contact your doctor and find out if you have sleep apnea or there can be other reasons why you should go to a hospital or a doctor if especially you have attention concentration or memory problems especially in the day time apart from being tired or being tired and then if you have drowsiness issues in the day time or you have headaches or weight gain sudden unexplained weight gain can also be a symptom of indication of sleep apnea so you should go to a doctor and discuss the reasons all these reasons discuss your condition find out if you have sleep apnea there are studies which can be done which are called as sleep studies to find out whether or not you have sleep apnea so we'll do a section on sleep studies separately but for now we're talking about snoring so what can you do at your level if you snore so there are some things which you can do to tackle this snoring problem the first thing is do not lie on your back try to sleep either on the side or you elevate the head and head end of the bed by pillows or by any means so that is one thing which you can do second is try to lose the extra weight losing weight will help that's the first and most important sure shot treatment of snoring so losing weight will help decrease the amount of alcohol which you take especially at night so don't sleep after taking alcohol treat any blockage in your nose say congestion by cold allergies get them treated or if there is a polyp or a deviated nasal septum get it operated or uh, avoid sedatives avoid sleeping pills sedatives in the night time and you can use an anti snoring device yes they are available 
in the market and with the prescription of your doctors as well so you can talk to your doctors especially a pulmonologist who can help you out in diagnosing and treating the problem of snoring as well as sleep apnea so i hope guys this information has helped you out so do help me out by sharing this video and subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell icon as much as you can uh, bell icon and do ask your friends and relatives to subscribe this channel as much as you can. We need all the help we can get. We'll be back with another health topic explanation just for you on Dr. Education. I'm Dr. Paranjit and you're watching Dr. Education.